Let me show you something that I'm really excited about. So here on screen, you can see that I've got a basic chat app, right? So this is a chat app that I built many months ago using Sakure along with React. So here on this first tab now, you can see that I'm simply typing the message, hey, I hit send. And then when I go back on over to the other tab, you can see that the message was received. Now that's not the part that I'm super excited about. Here's the part that I'm actually very excited about. You can see that I've actually got this little button that says choose file. So let me actually do that. Let me choose a file. I'm going to choose the, uh, I guess I'll choose the picture and picture thumbnail right over here. Let me hit open. And now let me hit send. Well, now you can see that instead of me just being able to send text messages, I can actually send picture messages as well. If I go back over to the other tab, you can now see that the picture message was in fact received by the other person who it is that I'm chatting with. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Let's get into it. Woo! So a few months ago, I actually made a video demonstrating how to use Sakadeo to build a one-on-one -on -one chat. In fact, that's what this video is actually based off of. So in other words, I'm going to be using the sort of final code of that video to and then go ahead and add the feature of being able to share images just the same. So if you want to follow along with me, you'll find the sort of final code of that video down in the description box below, and that's going to serve as your starting files for this video over here. And also, by the way, if you actually missed that video, you'll find a link to it down in the description box as well. And I actually would recommend that you watch that one before you actually jump into this one. So the one and only file that's going to be relevant for what we want to do right now is going to be inside of the client folder, inside of the source folder. We are going to be going to the app.js file. This is where we are going to be making all of our necessary code changes to get this new feature added into the basic chat app. Okay, so let's think about what it is that we kind of have to do. I guess the first step would be, of course, to sort of add the input where you can go ahead and choose a file that you want to send off to the other person. So here now you can see that right underneath the text area inside of my JSX, I've now went ahead and added this basic input that is going to be of type equals file. And for its on change handler, it's going to be referencing a function called select file. So this is going to be the actual function that we're going to be using to actually grab the file out of the input and then store it in state. So this function has not been defined just yet. So let's go ahead and define that now. So this now is actually going to be that select file function defined. You can see that it's accepting this event argument. So this E basically represents the event and here I'm basically going to be calling two updater functions that I'm going to be having on state. So the first one is going to be set message. This one already exists in state. We already have this from the sort of previous code. Basically when you're actually typing into the text box, every single time every keystroke, every sort of change, every new value that you're typing into the text box gets recorded by actually using the set message function and that's basically what allows you to kind of see your changes as you're typing in the text box. So what I decided to do was now I wanted to kind of take the name of the file that you've just chosen and sort of have that printed in the text box therefore kind of giving you some visual cue as to which file you're about to send to the other person. So what I'm doing is I'm basically taking the name out of the file and then passing that into my set message function, which is then going to go ahead and update the message variable that I have on state, allowing me to actually see the name of the file in my text box of what it is that I'm about to send to the other person. And now here I've actually got this other function that's going to be living in my state. This one has actually not been defined just yet, and this is called set file. And basically what I'm actually doing is I'm taking the actual file, the actual blob, passing it into the set file function, which basically means I'm going to have some kind of variable in state that I'm going to be calling file, which is going to house the actual variable, the actual file that we're going to be pulling out of the the uh, t a file input. So now you'll notice that up here at line 98, I actually went ahead and defined a new bit of state called file with its corresponding updated function set file. This is the one that I kind of just mentioned that I'm using inside of my select file function. And again, I'm basically getting this by using the simple use state hook. So there's nothing too exciting here. So now that we actually have the ability to select the file, let's actually now go and work on the ability to actually send the file. So as it turns out, we actually already have a function here called send message. This, this uh, send message function gets called every single time that you click on this button here. So we've got this button that says send. When you click on it, this on submit uh, event within the form is going to get raised calling our send message function. So the actual ability to already send the message works. The problem is as it is right now, it doesn't sort of account for the fact that you're going to be sending a file. It basically just takes the message as is and just sends that. So let's change that. So let's take a look at the changes that I've made to the send message function. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that I've got this if check that says if file. So basically the assumption here is right, the file variable that we have in state starts its life out as undefined. It gets initialized to undefined. Now the only time that the file variable actually gets value is when we actually go into the uh, select file function right over here and we actually choose a file. So in other words, only once you're actually choosing a file from the file input does that variable in state now actually have some kind of value. So now the assumption is if the file variable is basically undefined still, that must mean that you haven't actually chosen any file and therefore what you're trying to send is actually just a basic text message. But on the other hand, if file variable does have a value, well then clearly you have in fact selected a file and now we understand that you're actually trying to send the file and not a basic text message. So that's what we're doing right over here. We're basically saying if file, if file is not undefined, in this case, let's go ahead and build up this message object. We're going to be including most of the same attributes that we're including down here in the case of a basic text. The only thing that's going to be different is that in this case, type is not going to be equal to text, rather it's going to be equal to file. And then we're including two more basic properties. One of them is going to be the MIME type, which basically is going to be the MIME type of the file. In other words, whether it's a PNG or a JPEG, 
bag or something like that. And then finally, we're going to also include the name of the file. Now, the rest of what we're doing down here is basically very similar to what we kind of did over here. Essentially, we're just going to go ahead and turn the message variable that we have in state back to just an empty string. This will then go ahead and clear out the text box. In other words, every single time that you hit the send button and you try to send the message, we want to make sure that the text box gets cleared, allowing you to sort of compose a new message. Here, we're going to go ahead and call the set file function to allow us to sort of take the file variable in state and make it undefined again. So therefore, this logic can keep working. And then finally, we actually go ahead and call upon our socket ref. We call it submit method, sending out a message uh, to the server with this particular message object. And that's basically it for actually sending the message. Okay, so at this point, we've made all the necessary changes that we needed to make to our send message function to account for the fact that we're going to be sending a file. Now we have to actually go down to the part where we're rendering our messages. In other words, as the message comes in, we actually have a little chat window that shows you the message that has already been coming in. So now we have to make some changes there to kind of account for the fact that some messages might not be text messages, rather they might actually be picture messages. So let's go make those changes now. So here in my JSX, you can see that I'm basically looping over my messages array. So this is going to be an array that I have in state that this is going to basically hold all of the messages that are getting sent back and forth. This is what I can then loop over to sort of render the messages within the chat window. And right now, the only logic that this mapping inside of my JSX is basically doing as we kind of iterate over the messages array, the only logic that's happening is we're basically just checking to see if the message that we're currently trying to render, whether it's your message or whether it's a message that you received. And then based on that, we're going to know whether we kind of render a my row or partner row, just kind of giving you a visual cue within the UI to know whether this is your message or one that you received. But now we have to actually also add in the logic to know whether this is a file or a text message, which means that now we're going to start having a little bit of extra logic in this mapping. So one of the first things that I want to do is I want to kind of take this sort of inline logic that I have in my JSX. I want to make it no longer be inline. Instead, I kind of want to put it into its own separate function. Okay, so now you can see that instead of me kind of having all of the rendering logic as I'm mapping over my messages array happening inside of my JSX, you can now see that all I'm doing is I'm saying messages.map, and then for every time that we're mapping, go ahead and call the render messages function, which has now been defined up over here. But as of right now, this render messages function is not actually doing anything, so let's change that. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing within this render messages function. So first of all, we're going to be checking to see what the message type is, and we're going to see whether or not it's in fact a file. So if it's not a file, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to basically be keeping the same logic that we had earlier, which is really just um, checking to see whether this is a message that you had sent or whether this is a message that you received. In other words, if it's a message that you sent, we're going to simply use the my row component. Otherwise, we're going to be using the partner row component. And this is exactly what was happening earlier inside of my JSX, except earlier was happening in line. Now I extracted it to a separate function, but that logic is exactly the same. Nothing too interesting happening right over here. On the other hand, in the case where a message is in fact a file, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to basically take the message that body, in other words, the actual file that was sent to the other person, and we're going to be passing it into this blob constructor. So this is where I just need to explain one quick thing. Essentially, when you actually have a an input that is of type equals file, and you actually grab a file out of it, what you're actually getting is going to be a blob. That is basically the data type that it is. It's called a blob. Now, typically, if you just want to go ahead and render a blob, you can very easily do that. And very soon, we're going to see how we actually do that. But a blob is very easy to actually render that into an image tag. The problem here is when we actually take this file and send it down to the server because we're trying to send it to the other person via the WebSocket. So of course we have to involve the server. What's happening is instead of it sort of staying a blob, it kind of loses its blobness, so to say, and then it basically gets turned into a byte array. Now the problem is we can't actually take a byte array and then render that into the image tag. A blob is very easy to render in an image tag, but a byte array we can't. Therefore here what we're doing is we're basically taking the message of body, which in this case is no longer a blob, rather it's a byte array. We pass it into the first argument of the blob constructor, turning it back in to a to a blob, and now we can simply go and render it inside of our image component. Which we're going to be building up very soon. Now, also, if you remember earlier when we were actually sending the message, we were including the type of the file, basically the MIME type, whether it's a PNG or a JPEG. And that's what we're basically using as the second argument to our blob constructor. So in other words, when you want to go ahead and create a new blob, it's, in, it's important to make sure that you tell it what type of file are you creating? Is it going to be a PDF? Is it going to be PNG and JPEG? So here we're basically saying what the message type is. And that's because we were able to send it along when we actually sent the file. And now the logic is going to be quite similar to what we did earlier, basically just going to check to see whether this is a message that you sent or whether it's a message that you received. And then based on that, we're going to just know how to kind of render it. Are we going to use a my row component or are we going to be using a partner row component? And again, that part is not very interesting. The next part that is actually quite interesting is this image component that we now need to go and create because this is going to be the component that's responsible for actually taking this blob that we've now created from the byte array and actually render that on screen. So let's go ahead and work on this image component now. So here you can see I've now created a new file called image.js and in within this file I now have all the code needed to make this uh, basic image component work. So the first thing that I want to take a look at is going to be this image tag that I'm returning down in my JSX. And so the first thing I'm kind of supplying my image tag with is going to be the style attribute. I'm basically giving it some simple dimensions. I'm saying that its width is going to be 150 pixels. And for the height, I'm saying that it should give me the height of auto. And then what this does is make sure that the browser can maintain the aspect ratio of the image. For the source attribute, I'm basically passing this variable called image source, which I've defined on state. So here you can see that 
we've got this use state hook call where I'm basically creating a variable called image source, along with this updater function called set image source. And I'm initializing this to be an empty string. And then here on the alt tag, I basically am giving it props.file name. So if you remember, we actually sent along the file. And besides for just sending along the file, we sent along the MIME type, but we also sent the, na the name of the file. And I'm using that here on the alt tag. And the alt tag serves basically two very simple purposes. One is if let's say for whatever reason, the image couldn't get rendered. At the very least, the alt tag will still be there to kind of give us the name of the file, giving you some indication about what was trying to be sent. And more importantly, if let's say somebody is using a screen reader, the alt tag can give this person who's using a screen reader some kind of context about what is actually on screen without actually them being able to see it. But of course, this image source that we have right over here is now an empty string. And this is what we're trying to pass to the source uh, attribute on our image tag, which means we have to kind of give this something that our image tag can use to actually go ahead and display this image on the screen. So that's what's now currently happening inside of our use effect. So if you remember earlier, I basically mentioned that we're taking the blob that we're getting out of the file input. We send that down to the server. The server then for some reason converts that into a byte array. And then I have to myself explicitly go and turn that back into a blob. This is now the reason why I had to do that. See, the thing is the source attribute that we have here on the image tag doesn't actually accept the blob as an argument that we can pass to it. In other words, the blob itself is not something that you can pass to the source tag to then go ahead and display the image. In fact, we need something else. And so that's where this file reader comes into play. Basically, we're going to be creating this file reader object and the file reader object has a method on it called read as data URL. So whatever this read as data URL does to our blob, it basically turns it into something that we can in fact pass to our source attribute and actually have the image displayed. But the thing is the method, this read as data URL method that we're using to kind of convert this file into something that we can in fact display on the screen, what it requires you to pass in is a blob, which means that when we actually have this byte array, passing the byte array alone is not going to work. We have to take the byte array, turn it back into a blob, pass it into this method here. Now this method is going to do some special voodoo to it, some special magic, and turn it into something that we can in fact pass to our source attribute. And so that's basically what's happening over here. We're renewing up this reader object. We're calling upon this read as data URL um, method, passing in our blob. And now the reader actually has an event called onload end, which basically means that whenever this read as data URL is done doing its thing, the onload end event is going to get raised to which I basically pass this function. And all this function is really doing is it's calling upon the set image source function that I have within my use state, taking the reader's result, passing it in here. At this point, now our image source is going to go from being an empty string to being whatever the result of this read as data URL function did. And now our image will actually be able to be displayed. So the last little bit that we need to do before we can actually run this application is now go back into our app file and make sure that we import the image component that we just created. Okay, so now you can see that on line four, I'm simply saying import image from dot slash image. And that basically concludes all the code. And I think we're finally ready to run this app and see whether or not it works. Okay, so to run this app, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have two terminal tabs open. You wanna make sure that the first one is open at the root of the application, basically where the server file lives. And now you wanna make sure that you install the dependencies. You can of course do that using either NPM or Yarn. I'm gonna just use Yarn. And now once that's done, you can open up a second tab. And on this tab, you want to basically be open to the exact same location, except now go one level deeper. You want to make sure that you open within the client folder. And once again, you want to make sure that you install the dependencies, same spiel. You can either use Yarn or NPM, that's up to you. I'm going to use Yarn. Okay, so now that my dependencies are done installing in both the server side code as well as the client side code, I'm going to go back over to the terminal where my server lives, in other words, in the root of the application. Simply run the command node server.js. This is going to be bringing up my express server. Head on over to the client folder, and I'm going to be running the command Yarn and start. And now this is going to be bringing up the client side or rather the create react app project where the client side code lives. Okay, so now we're back in the browser. The app seems to be running fine. Let's go ahead and choose a file. So here we are. We now chose the picture in picture thumb. Let me hit send. Go back over to the other tab and you can see that the message was in fact sent successfully. Well, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like. It really helps the channel and I'll be back next week with another video. Woo!